Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Cindy and I want you to go floss yourself. <laughs> so I'm doing fun and educational videos about dentistry. I've been practicing here in Canada since 2012 and as the owner of my very own practice, Horizon Dental, I really love finding new ways to brighten lives and create smiles. So if you like what I'm showing, <laughs> please uh, remember to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And today, the day that I am posting this video is my birthday! Happy birthday to me! <laughs> I'm excited to do another Dentist Reacts video on YouTube. This one is titled, DIY Dentist Closed the Gap in My Teeth Myself. So I cannot wait to dive into this video. This video is so requested. Like, I haven't got a video this requested since my lip filler video, okay? So here it is. My DMs are literally full of people every day asking me to do this video. As you guys know, I'm DIY queen. I don't know if you guys can see, but I had a gap in my tooth. It was okay. very superficial. The gap was really small, okay? So I didn't really care. Yeah, a lot of people actually end up with what we call a diastema, or a natural space in between their two front teeth, or amongst any teeth, really. Um, this is definitely a little bit more common in people with an African heritage, but almost anybody could have a diastema. We see it happen more often like if the upper lip attachment is really low on the gums and it can actually affect how your permanent teeth erupt through the gum tissue and can sometimes cause a space there. Uh, it sounds as though she had this gap closed cosmetically um, with probably some sort of bonding material. I'm just kind of guessing based on the fact that it seems like she's done this herself. Um, some people can do that. Some people choose to do veneers or crowns, something to cover the teeth, or they might use orthodontics to just kind of close the gaps in their teeth. When she was younger, she got her gap filled. So when I was 16, my mom took me to the dentist and the dentist filled my gap. Perfect. Okay. okay? So she had it done. Later, she had it I like bit an apple or I bit into something. The filling came right out. And I had this big <laughs> nasty chip in my tooth. It was so embarrassing. Yeah. I went yeah. to the dentist. This is very similar like, to my lip filler video onto why I started doing it myself. Ooh, I went to the dentist the too. and I'm like, hello, this filler was promised to last me 10 years, okay? It Ooh, didn't even last five, but that's interesting. I went to go speak to the same one who filled my tooth. But unfortunately, that dentist didn't work at that clinic anymore. So this okay, that next guy, he was Chinese, but he had an Indian accent. So I guess he's Chinese, but he's from India. He basically sure that 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 that. filled my tooth again. I should be good to go. Like, I should not worry for another 10 years. I said, beautiful. Filled my okay. tooth. Not even a year passed. It fell out. Okay, yeah. Year. Yeah, so I can definitely appreciate why she would have been frustrated both times that this happened. Um, this is definitely not something that I will promise people. If we're doing bonding like this, cosmetic bonding, there is a limit to what the teeth can handle. It looks like she had the space filled and the first time it lasted 12 years. That's a really good lifespan for that. There's no guarantee that a filling or any sort of dental restoration is going to last you a lifetime. Unfortunately, biting into something like an apple can break that bond on the filling material and the bonding can break away, leaving you with this kind of cosmetic gap. So I'm vexed. I call my friend, the same one who gave me the lip filler. I tell her my situation. I tell her what happened. She's like, you know, I have like a link to get the same products that they use at the dentist. Okay. So I said, hook me up. Told me the price of it, which was $150. So it came with the dental resin. Okay. It came with the gel. gel. It came with the dental etching, etching stick and these two okay. tools. And I also bought on the side, although I didn't have to, the dental curing lamp. Okay. So the resin that I got from her, it's a cell curing material, meaning that you don't necessarily need the dental curing lamp. So the dental curing lamp is, you know that thing when you go to the dentist that, that they put on you to that light and then they hold it there, it beeps. That light hardens the dental resin, so it dries faster. I bought that. So she's right. There are two kind of basic types of filling material that we have. The self-curing, which we usually mix two materials together, and when they mix, it starts the chemical reaction that will take it from a liquid or paste into something that is nice and hard. Um, a lot of the times, we'll use something called a dual cure, which means that it'll start curing on its own chemically, but we can speed up that process with the curing light that she's mentioning there as well, although I didn't need to because this resin that I got from her, it's a self curing resin. That means once you put it on your tooth, it dries by itself. You don't even need the light. But I bought it anyways because I feel like with the light, it dries faster. Unfortunately, I don't have the light right now. I left it at my abuela's house. But like I said, you don't need the light. So today, 
tooth. I'm gonna show you how I do my tooth. Although my tooth is already filled, I already filled it. I'm gonna put on more dental resin on top of the tooth just to show you guys how I do it. I wanna help you guys out. It was only $150. I'm probably never gonna have to buy it again because the amount that you need to fill a gap is so little bit. That I'm assuming that this stuff probably came from China. So I can see why it wasn't terribly expensive. Um, she's probably right though, that she wouldn't need very much material to do a really small diastema. I'll probably have it for like ever and it's so funny because like I filled my mom's gap because my mom filling that the dentist did mind you professionally okay that we paid for her filling actually fell out so I told my mom like hey mom I filled my own tooth let me fill your tooth so I filled her tooth and I filled it so good but she didn't trust me she went to the dentist the next day whoever did your tooth did an amazing job are they a dental student and my mom's like no she's not I'm gonna stop I talking. don't I'm even have a comment to that. I'm, I'm gonna film my tooth. Although it's already filled, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. So first, you're gonna need just like a random piece of paper. I just found this paper. I'm just gonna use it. So now I'm gonna take the dental resin and I'm gonna just gonna pour just a little bit. It comes with a little scoop, but I don't know what that is. Normally this would be a little bit of a problem because a lot of our materials, there's a specific ratio that you wanna have. So I would definitely I don't want to recommend anybody do their own filling if possible, but I think that it's important to measure your ingredients when you're working with any kind of material. Oh, you guys can see. And I'm just gonna put that to the side. Next, I'm going to take my etching. Yeah, gel. it's definitely the etching gel is an important step. It is going top. to prepare the so outer surface right of the tooth to bond to the material. The etching gel so the um, this looks very I'm similar to the etching that we have. So, uh, I'm just gonna do in the middle. This is good enough. Yeah, you don't need very much of the etch. <laughs> the etching is just on because you're gonna leave this on for 30 seconds. 30 seconds is actually too long for most etching products. If you're just etching that outer enamel layer, they recommend 15 to 20 seconds tops. The reason for that is that the enamel is quite hard, so it etches very well. If you leave it on there for too long, you risk sensitizing the tooth. And I think it's also important to not put the etching material onto your gums because, again, they're very sensitive and you could burn them. 30 seconds light. Okay, so now I take a tissue and I'm gonna wipe it off. We won't often wipe the etching material off, we'll rinse it away, absolutely. So now that I take it dry, you're gonna experience a lot of shit in your mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna take dental resin and I'm gonna take the gel and I'm going to. I feel like she's a little bit incorrect about the way that she's referring to the products. This is just me being a little bit picky. Uh, but usually the resin itself is going to be a liquid and again the powder is going to be some sort of filler material that's going to give it some strength. Um, I'm also a little bit worried because she's not doing any kind of isolation for her teeth. Um, isolation means keeping, basically keeping them dry. You know, she's talking and she's got her lip going over top of her teeth. And that's going to rehydrate the teeth. It's going to remove any benefit to etching her tooth. That's why we'll use cotton rolls or a rubber dam or our suction units to make sure that we're keeping the area really dry when we're doing any sort of bonding. Uh, I'm twisted. I'm going to put one drop of this onto this. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna mix it. Mix it for 30 okay. seconds. Most of our materials don't need to be After you mix, it's gonna look like this. Now, take this yeah. for a dry. You're gonna put it on the. Because if it's a if it's a chemical cure or self cure, it's gonna start curing once it's fully mixed. So you do have to be kind of quick with that stuff. Space that you wanna fill. Are you seeing me looking over here? I'm looking at my mirror. And again, she got her teeth all wet. So how strong of a bond this is gonna be? She's doing a really good job of like holding it though, but she's also probably gluing her teeth together right now with this resin, based on what I can see. <laughs> oh my god, she liked it. Do you have any idea how hard I work every day to keep people from licking their teeth when I'm doing fillings? I would basically have to start over from scratch, completely from scratch, if somebody licked their tooth while I was doing it. <laughs> I don't have a lot of confidence in how well bonded this material is going to be. Now, you're gonna have to make it look like two teeth. So you're gonna have to put a line in between. After it's dry a little bit, you're gonna have to put floss oh, okay, in it. Okay, so it's basically going to two floss teeth. the teeth. Because it's not, build up, so it's go in there, and that's not good. 
She's doing a really great job of like blending and shaping. Well, I'm now taking this side and I'm definitely gonna make a yeah. line in the middle. So it looks like pretty. Yeah, she's doing a really good job of blending this in. Honestly, I don't know if I could do this. Right now, I'm just taking the side of it and I'm basically scraping out the top to make sure there's no excess resin on the top. And I'm also going to do the same thing at the back. Yeah, yeah, she's blending it in. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really use an explorer to do this kind of blending. This is the sort of thing that I will shape with one of my little tools and then take like a finishing burr and a finishing wheel or disc to sort of blend all of that in so that there's no flakes or ledges where stains and food can get caught or that you can catch with your floss and then pull your filling off with. I'm gonna take this now. I'm gonna put it in my mouth to see the back of my teeth. For doing this in a mirror, she's actually doing a really good job. Now I'm basically just waiting for my teeth to dry. I'm sorry, I just played it in this set. What can I do? I just, I don't think, this stuff isn't meant to get so wet. I'm gonna get it like fire in it, and then I'm gonna rinse my mouth with cold water. So I'm just gonna be adding just a little bit more at the bottom here. Yeah, and sometimes I'll go back in there and I'll add a little bit extra as well, even after I'm done polishing if I don't polish. Just so like, it's, you know, it's straight. And then you have to polish it. <laughs> she just keeps licking it. You can't do that. Yeah, well, she's taking her time, and I can really appreciate she's taking her time to the shaping. Because she doesn't have the finishing discs, so she needs to be really, yeah, careful with this stuff, for sure. Can you guys see the difference, how it's super straight now? Or I had like a little, like, separation. Now it's like super straight. So now I'm just gonna let it dry. <laughs> it takes like a couple minutes for it to dry. When it yeah, dries, and that it would be why cold. she'd like that curing light, so that she doesn't have to sit there and wait. It's still wet. I'm just gonna leave it for a bit. The reason why I like using the dental curing lamp is because it dries See? immediately. All dries I have immediately. to do is put it on the tooth, like, dun, wait till it beeps, and it'd be dry. It's gonna take some time to dry. I wish I. One thing I wanna add here too is those curing lights. I would be very cautious about buying your own and not knowing what kind of wavelength of light that they're using or the type of light. The original curing lamps used UV light. So we used to place, you know, shields over top of them. You don't want to look directly at UV light. You can damage your eyes. Nowadays, we're using a lot of blue light, which is just still on the visible light spectrum. So it's not damaging to your eyes. So if you're going to invest, please don't. But if you're going to invest in your own curing lamp, I would definitely do your research on the wavelength of light and make sure that you're protecting your eyes. Okay, I have showed you how it looked when there was a gap there. I had like a little like opening at the bottom that I just now filled. A few <laughs> moments later. <laughs> so it's slowly drying. I'm gonna try to make like a line in between it just to make two teeth. She's still licking it. I just can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> So this is it. So I'm gonna wait 24 hours, and after 24 hours, I'm gonna push a floss in there. That'll basically separate. That's interesting. If I do that right now, which is why I like having the dental curing lab, because if I have a dental curing lab, I'd be able to put floss in it right now because it would dry immediately. But because it's a self-curing resin, it takes some time to dry. So for the first 24 hours, don't eat anything hard, don't bite into mm -hmm. anything. Again, I'm curious about what kind of material this would be because none of my resins, like if I put filling material over top of your front teeth here, it doesn't matter if you wait two hours or 24 hours, you are not going to be able to pass the floss in between those teeth. So I have no idea what kind of material she's using, but it's kind of fascinating. But at least she's promoting the concept of being able to floss. I do like that. Be mindful um, when you're brushing your teeth, brush very softly to make sure that it's stuck in place. My abuela has a big, big, big gap in her front tooth, and I did it and I filled it for her. You can eat, you just can't bite into anything. Okay, I also love that she's giving advice about, you know, being careful about what you eat or how you use your teeth once they've been restored. Honestly, if she followed that advice for the filling that the original dentist did, then she might not have needed to do the DIY thing. So I do hope that those of you watching who do have something bonded for your front teeth, that you do have a dentist that you have a really positive relationship with who you can go to in case something goes wrong.
You just like do this yourself. Do it at night before you go to bed. You really give your mouth time to just chill the hell out because it needs to harden. I'm gonna leave the email in the description box below if you wanna get your own. Please Sorry, don't I'm follow this it's link. So I'm too scared to click it. I did mine in April and um, I haven't had any problems since then and it is now November. Holy so it's like been over six months. The only reason why I did it again is because I want to show you guys or I would have just left it alone. A lot of you guys literally been dragging me because I want to do it myself. But so it's apparently like, she does a lot of things do herself. herself. Do it yourself. Oh, her lip fillers look bad. She does her own lip filler. Bad. But like real sh if I didn't tell you guys I had my lips done, none of you guys would know. None of you guys would know I had my lips done if I didn't <laughs> a lot of That's probably enough for this video. <laughs> I think that the big important takeaways from this are to ask a lot of questions of your dentist if you're going to have any sort of cosmetic bonding done. What are the foods to avoid? How do you take care of it? What can you expect? I think it's also important to, you know, fa facilitate a really positive relationship with your dentist so that if you do run into trouble or something does go wrong, that you have somebody that you can trust and go to for help. Um, I think that it's also important to like, research your materials and be really cautious about the things that you can find online. Um, with that being said, it's kind of hard for me to admit it, but at least visually speaking, it looks like she did a pretty decent job. I, she's got mad skills when it comes to molding that material and shaping it to the way that she likes it. And I have a lot of respect for that. It's taken me a decade to master some of those skills. So I do think that like, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the result that she could get, but I'd really love to see that up close and you know, find out what kind of material that was, what sort of bond it has, and can she actually floss in between it? Or has she created an issue where she might end up with a big cavity there? So I have a lot more questions than answers after watching this video, but I did definitely enjoy it. And uh, please make sure that any comments that you leave me down below are positive and that you know we're keeping things light and fun because that's the point of these videos. So that's it for this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, remember to leave me a comment below and let me know your thoughts on this video and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Wish me a happy birthday, <laughs> and don't forget to go floss yourself. <laughs>